Welcome back everybody. This is Ron out here in the shop and uh, thank you guys for coming back. This is going to be part two of the drill press mobile base and the facelift on the drill press. Trying to get everything back together, get in better working shape than it's ever been since I've had it. Uh, I actually made a statement earlier, I think in the first video or somewhere in one of these videos, that when I got this drill press it was already old. Uh, I did some research on it. That drill press was not as old as I thought it was. It just looked really old, I guess, for the very short span of time that between it was new and when I actually got it, uh, it was not taken care of. The, the post was all rusty on it. The table was rusty. Uh, I don't know what it was supposed to come out of a, uh, uh, a, a school down in San Antonio out of a wood shop or something down there years ago. Anyway, we're going to get back on that and uh, I just wanted to clear that up. That actually was, I think in 2009, it was brand new. I think I picked it up in 10 or 11, something like that. Anyway, we're gonna get to this. And we'll see you guys back here in a bit. Okay, we got our blades in from Evolution. We're gonna get these things back on the saw and get this thing finished up on this drill press mount. I've done a few other calculations. I did a dry fit on the mock-up that we had with the three inch risers to go where the casters were at the bottom. Coming from the bottom to the caster extension. And that three inches only gives it about half inch to three quarters or five eighths to three quarters. I'm not real tickled with that distance, so I'm gonna take, and I'm going to shorten, I'm gonna cut four brand new ones, cause I'm not gonna cut the other ones, cause they're three inches. I'm gonna cut four brand new ones down to about two and three quarters. So we will have the proper clearance underneath the very bottom that supports the whole entire drill press. That's my goal. I want enough clearance where if I go over a hump in the driveway or a little small bump or a difference, it doesn't hang up and cause an issue moving it around. Get this put on here real quick. I don't know if you guys are real sure Anybody that's got an evolution saw, but I was reading in the directions on this. It's actually 18 foot pounds of torque on this screw. So I should get a torque wrench in the Allen head, put it in here and torque that down. I'm guessing at it, but I should probably do that anyway. I'm going to get my torque wrench. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Well, that's a pretty good guess, right at 18 pounds. All right. Okay, so we got all four of those cut. Let's double check all of our measurements real quick. Make sure we're still good. Should be two and three quarter, two and three quarter. Okay. Clean those up, we'll come back and we'll uh, double check the mock up on those and make sure we're good. Then go ahead and tack weld these things, get them all prepped and tack weld them together. Okay, so we've got everything cleaned up and prepped and ready to weld together. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to 
mark the casters out. Go ahead and drill those and get ready to have the holes for the nuts and bolts and stuff to go through that. So I'm going to get ready, mark these out, and then drill all four of these real quick. Okay, we're going to get these things drilled out a little bit here. Just to double check it, we can always ream a few holes out if we have to. I will take, oh yeah, shoot me, look at there. I think we're looking good actually. Right on the money. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're gonna get this thing uh, tacked up real quick. Give me a sip of my java juice. Mm. You get that far enough away from my weld and I won't get nothing in it. Mm. 
Sweet. That works. I like it. We're gonna let those cool down for a bit and we'll come back and get the others. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to grind all these down, get those nice and smooth. So I don't want the jagged edges and all that. Welds are not bad, they're not still not perfect, uh, but I just want it clean. So I'm gonna take the time to do that real quick.
Okay, we're gonna tack a few things up real quick. Let those cool off and we'll come okay we got this all mocked up for this first set of braces to go down inside here along these right here at the top to be flush with the top these others will come in here they will sit down in here when we're done so I'm gonna tack all of this into place and then we'll come back and we'll get these tacked into place then we'll move forward. Okay, so we are set up. What we're going to do is I've got these uh, blue dyed off. I've got my square line off the back edge here along this edge. Four and three sixteenths back from this measurement is my guide for my saw. We're going to use this for the first time today. Uh, I'm going to cut this a straight line. What I'm doing is cutting the end panels for this. So these will be the end panels that go on across here, okay? Cutting one front and back, and I've got enough material to get that done, so we're gonna do that. 
I'm, the full measurement across is 14. Outside to outside on the bottom rack is 14 and a quarter. So I'm cutting this at 14 to leave myself an eighth inch on each side so I can weld this down, tack it in across the bottom wherever I need to do it. Works really well. Okay, so I decided to take three inches from the back out. So that's gonna work for me. I'm gonna get this blued up so I know where my line needs to go. Okay, so I have this clamped with C-clamps on each end on my three inch mark. So I can scribe this mark down through here. one and three eighths one and three eighths in I can tell you I don't like cutting like that with all that saw hanging off here I have no good platen for it to sit on it works but you saw at the end I was doing this I wasn't sure if I was flat or not I was listening to the saw and it wasn't making good sense to me so anyway but we're good I'm gonna take a file real quick knock any burrs off of that edge real fast
this is basically these plates if you haven't figured it out already so it's pretty simple it keeps the drill press from sliding forward or backwards I've decided to go ahead and just knock off the heat affected zones wherever you can see them uh, and the uh, welds with the wire wheel that's what I'm doing now okay sanded everything else already down with the 120 that's paint ready so we're gonna let this cool off a little bit more yeah it's still got some heat in it pretty good I don't want that to affect the paint plus I'm gonna come down and wipe it down with some denatured alcohol or some thinner to make sure that we've got all the contaminants off of it whatever fingerprints grease then we'll paint it Okay, everybody, I'm sitting out here. I've got my saw horses set up. I've got my one and a half inch tube to hold my post for my drill press. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with a buffing wheel. Uh, try to get all this crap off of it. I already hit it with a wire wheel as best I could. I'm going to come back and hit it with some compound. Try to get down into here into the uh, grain of the metal and uh, the way this thing was turned on a lathe and see if I can't get this cleaned up and get some of this junk out of here. So anyway, uh, probably not going to have a lot of volume on uh, because this rouge and stuff I'm using on these polishing wheels and these buffing wheels, this stuff gets everywhere. So I uh, don't want it in my mics and all that stuff because it will just gunk them all up. Anyway, we're going to get busy on that and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to start at the base, which we already have. I have the base, I have the post in the base. I have the set screw in there to hold the post. I've got this, which is my 
guide for the crank for the table up and down. So we have to put this in here. This big long spot goes at the top. We put this in here, mesh it up with the gears. We come over here and we very gently align all of this. Set that in the V groove down there. I have this ring that sets down on top of it. I'm going to set that there. I'll get the set screw, tighten that up. Then the head goes down on top of this with all the motor, belts, everything else in it. So, this is the top. The handle should be down here, which puts that in the right position. So this notch goes down on this side. I'm going to drop these in here. I've already got them attached to the plate where they belong. We will get the flat spots worked out here in just a moment. Once I get everything in here in place. There we go. This does that. The motor's bolted here. It pushes it back and forth to tighten the belts up in here. All right. So we'll get the flat spots aligned here in a minute. The flat spots on these have to go out because you have these set screws that come in on the side right here. And this is what locks the motor down once you get it into place. This is what helps hold that motor secure. So we're going to put these in flat, screw these in just snug up to against the flat spot of the bolt, just to right there. That'll hold it. Get this other one turned around. Alright, so that is sliding in there. I have what is called a small keyway pin. This is my small keyway pin. I don't know if you can see that it actually has the square slot on both sides of this at the top. It has the screw slot in it. That goes into the side over here in this keyway for the shaft. As that comes through, pull that in you take and you set this spring keep clicking it over till you have good tension and you want this to be able to pull all the way back there we go okay okay getting the motor routed around here I'm gonna get all my bolts and nuts I have my new washers, stainless washers, it's what I could find so it's what's going to work, so stainless is good, I'm happy with stainless, I'll be fine with that. I did save as much of the hardware as possible. Um, went through on the bench grinder. You saw me earlier doing some of that. To knock off all the crud, rust, garbage, gunk, grime, whatever. I did that with as much as possible. That's the wrong nut. And that goes on another deal, and I know where that goes. 
There we go. Alright. We're going to put this back down on the bench. In a position where I can work with the wiring. So, I have I have my little clip. This is uh, what I call my gold wing clip. I don't know if you can see it. It's a gold wing clip. It's got a screw in the middle of it, right? I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, this goes down in here. has a wire on each side. <laughs> Helps house all of this. So, these wires will actually come in and go out of here. They go in there and there. get them back in the same orientation and the same position they were in earlier that way we match as much of this as possible the light goes here I have my two screws for that the wires go down in between it Now, I had a big Phillips number three, and we, you had to use the driver to get this off of here. So in all retrospect, what we do is we use the driver to put it back on. So when I say driver, if most of you are not familiar, this is a driver. I'll put that number three bit in it. I will click that over to where when I hit down with this, it's gonna screw it in just a little bit. We only tap on it just lightly. Hold the handle. And that's it. Okay, we are going to be putting the ground wires on. We're wiring up the switches and everything else. Now that I've got all of that into play, let me turn this around where you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll get the top on this, line the pulleys up, get the pulleys put down on here, the idler pulley in the center. Once the top is on, we can measure this, get the motor right, tighten it down. I've got these two ground wires and they actually need to go here and here. Throw a screwdriver on the brown ground. It's all part of the technique. It won't work unless you do that. There we go. Ground screws always must be very tight. We want to make good connection always so we don't have electrical problems later. Okay, there's that. Those never got taken loose. Those are good. Pull that up. Put the switch in there. Put this down here. Put that back. The safety lock. There we go. So I can push the motor back to let the hand fall down in here. I can get my screws in here now.
All right, so run these in. Make sure we're not pinching anything along the way. Don't tighten them all the way down just yet. Snug them up to where we know everything is seated right. Then we can tighten them down. Now, the big pulleys, these will have to be pressed back down onto this. Okay, real quick, I had to uh, clean up the little keyways in here with a little small saw file. Got that cleaned up on both the pulleys and this. Was able to just drive it right down there and got it all the way to the bottom. So we're good there now. We're gonna drop this pulley into place here. That's our floater in the center. Then that will give us the ability to adjust the motor where it needs to be and we can tighten those up. So let me get the belts and we'll get this in place. Okay, let's see if I can do this without killing myself or wrecking anything. I already see a few spots I'm gonna have to touch up as it is anyway. All right. There we go. All right, so this, this, this goes in here. This is what I want to get done here. Get this motor raised up to where it needs to be. And tighten that. And that should be 600 right there. That should be my drill speed. Oh, those are nice and tight. <laughs> there we go. That is the drill press all put back together. Top to bottom. Let me throw a plug on this and make sure she's going to act right. Starts up. Steal my light bulb back out of my grinder, which goes over here in my drill press to begin with anyway. Oh, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Nice. Okay. She is back together. She is in a working state. I'm gonna get the chug back in it. All I gotta do is push this uh, Jacobs taper number three. Just tap it. That's all I'm doing to it. There ain't no need to get violent with it. There's no need to 
hammer the hell out of it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the base, get the casters on that, get that thing put in here. Then we're gonna move to the lower cabinets for this thing. We'll be back. Okay, we're gonna get ready and uh, put these casters on. That gum it. All right, the washers is just a little too much. I should have known. I should have figured this out. Okay. We're going to flip this over and then come back and get the other okay. side. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. It's the next morning after finishing the drill press. I just wanted to come out and give you guys a good uh, overview, cap a few things, uh, show you some stuff in the daylight. It was too dark last night when I finished. Lighting was horrible. You couldn't really see anything. Anyway, I'm going to show you the drill press. We've got it all put together. I've got it in the position to measure for the cabinets. The cabinets, I've already measured for the cabinets, so I didn't want to bore anybody with that on camera. Uh, I can go back and show it to you. I'm going to do my best to hopefully have some plans drawn up for this in the CAD program and try to get that implemented into my uh, channel been going through trying to learn the new software on the new additions that i used to have 15 years ago so <laughs> had to repurchase a new plant anyway i'm going to show you the drill press real quick and we'll run through a couple of things anyway it comes all the way down my cabinet so i'm going to have a corner cabinet that comes up here to this level which is 15 inches right under here okay this cabinet comes back 10 inches across here runs all the way across that's my front cabinet it's going to have shelves and whatnot it's going to come right up to underneath here which is right at 15 inches to the bottom of this that leaves me from here about 10 inches over the depth that i can use for that i've got nine and three quarter wide seven and a half deep and then i'm also coming up to 15 inches on this side all right We've got everything put together tables all painted you can see the scales are nice and clean we had taped those over to keep paint off of them all the way up the pole has been uh, cleaned up and shined back to original or better finally got this adjusted so it actually does return like it's supposed to uh, got all the serial number and everything here motor is leveled pulleys are in good shape got all the indicators over here were cleaned good the label obviously the up in here for that we taped over that to keep that original uh, as i was taking the tape off of this it was a plastic coating that had been on this um, since it was new um, so that came off with the tape when i took that off so i've got all the pulleys lined up across the top they're all symmetrical same height they are in line with one another this way you can see that if i can hold my camera still and they're level across so anyway this is pretty much it in its entirety without the cabinets i just wanted to run back out here and show that to you guys and give you all guys a good look at it uh bought my casters at harbor freight not impressed and i knew better i was just in a hurry to get casters on this thing uh i'm not liking the way that they're operating i may come back in later and change those Oh, one other thing that I didn't show you last night. I do have the end caps on here, okay? I put the plastic end caps on here and just pop those in, right? All the way on all four corners where the tubes were open, so. Get that. Yeah, I'm not gonna deal with that for very long, so. Anyway. Wanted to come out and show that to you guys today. We're going to get busy on the cabinets here pretty quick. 
get that metal cut down. Uh, it's the same metal that I have for the drawers for the welding cart behind me here. So that's first. We'll come back to this later. <laughs> so I want to make sure I get that done instead of working around it like I have been. So anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, you like everything that we've been doing. Uh, give us a good thumbs up. Leave a comment. Like and share if you would. I'd appreciate that. Um, I'm going to start leaving links in the bottom of the comments or the descriptions down below for uh, the tools that I use, like my evolution blades and saw and stuff like that, so you guys have a link to it. Uh, I will go ahead and omit right now at this point. I reached out to Evolution. I did acquire an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you guys any more to buy the products than it would me or anybody else. Uh, it just helps put a few dollars back into my account to help support this channel down the road. So, uh, trying to get that done and whatnot. So, just wanted to be fair and let you know. Doesn't cost you any more. I do have an affiliate link. I also was able to get you guys at least 5% off for now. So if you take the codes FAB and BUILD5, FAB and BUILD5, you can get a 5% discount on that, on everything that you buy. So anyway, you guys have a good one. Appreciate it. Be kind to one another. I'll see you guys back in the shop. I'm out of here.